Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> All right, we're up and rolling with what the up? walking encyclopedia himself. I guess that's me. <laughs> I can't get comfortable in this chair. I know, uh, dude. It's fucking weird. That's all good. I'll just move this back. There we go. Cool. So, what's the first thing to talk about tonight, bro? I think we should start with the wood business. The wood business. Like, how should we introduce him to the wood business, man? There's a lot to There's a lot to introduce. There's a lot to take in. But I feel like we can start about just how we thought about it, how, we, how it kind of came to conception. I think that's a good spot. I was thinking somewhere around the same. And I'd say that definitely starts with me being w- just overly optimistic about everything and just like just seeing, I don't know, I just took kind of like, okay, to everybody that doesn't know me, Landon, okay, so I've done a lot of wood selling in the past and I've kind of always worked with wood. Um, and so we used to sell firewood when I was in high school. We'd sell them to all the teachers at my high school. They were our biggest clients and we did really well, but we all had trucks. And so it made everything so much easier. And, you know, selling what was, it kind of became like my favorite pastime, my, my, my absolute favorite hobby. You know, I, I didn't realize you started all the way back in high school. I knew you mm-hmm. had done this like winters mm-hmm. and summers before, but yeah, no dude, like, Every single winter, you know, we would be selling wood to somebody, you know, I mean, obviously we started, you know, on just super kind of small scale with whatever wood we can bring back in our trucks, you know, and we mm-hmm. just kind of sell it for a little bit of profit. But then we started moving more wood back and more wood back. And, you know, my, my mom was a teacher at our, at my high school. And so I kind of got into the business from that because I had, we had a ton of wood in my backyard and I had no idea who I was going to sell it to. So I was like, mom would you mind just tossing out an email to all your like teacher friends, just sending kind of a group me group mass email saying that we had some wood for sale and whoever wanted some, we we'd go show up at their house whenever they were free and we'd, we'd deliver it. And so as soon as she sent that email out, we had like 40 orders to fill way too much demand <laughs> than what we could, than what we had. You're expecting some, like three like or four, maybe two or three, uh-huh. you know, but with like, Shit, dude. We had 40 fucking orders come in. So, you know, we were doing that. We were hustling. We were making good money. We were having a great time doing it. And so I got down to Missouri State, you know, and we were I was looking for something to do over the winter break. And, you know, I was like, man, who who could I, like, talk to that would really get into this? And I was like – And I feel like your approach was talk to everybody and to, then yeah, see who's actually exactly. interested. And then see who is, like, who actually would want to do this. And so – but as soon as I met you, I was like, dude, I'm, n- I'm not even going to have to, like, talk to him for that long. And I, I feel like he's going to be down for it. Like, uh-huh. I, feel like, I feel like Jordan's just kind of one of those guys just down to try new things, down to get a new perspective, like, down to see a different line of work. And so I, I started talking to you about it. And you showed, like, as you do, it's just about everything. You show, like, a genuine amount of interest in it. And so, you know, you start asking me all these questions. And I was like, man, this guy's actually genuinely interested. Like, I mean, I feel like, he, you know, he could actually be some, of some serious help. And would be a great guy to go into business with. You're also a good salesman. <laughs> you're a good salesman. And your defense, like you, you sold the idea well. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know about that, but I mean, I do what I can. I don't know. I'm, I wasn't really even trying to sell it. Like I just, I don't know. I mean, I think you were just genuinely excited. Enthu- like you were genuinely enthusiastic, about enthusiastic, it. passionate about the idea. But I feel like, I feel like in so many cases, and this is in so many different industries, dude. If you have enthusiasm for what you do, it spreads. Mm-hmm. Enthusiasm is contagious. That's what blew my mind is how enthusiastic and passionate you were about wood. <laughs> I'm like, what, what the hell is this? Like, I it, know. is I it know. really that fun? And right. I'm telling you, if somebody that had less enthusiasm was like. Hey, you want to do this thing part time? I guess mm-hmm. like we'll do it. And then mm-hmm. I'm just like, eh, I guess so. Yeah, like, and then yeah. I, I maybe I still end up doing it for whatever right. reason. I wouldn't right. have had as much fun no. as we had because you kept selling me on the fun thing, mm-hmm. and you yeah, kept and I was like, dude, I just want some money. Right. And and and, right. it, and also like to hang out with your best friend right. and right. right and just get after it and grind. But that grind was mm-hmm. so fun. That gr- dude, there's an element if you're grinding with the right people. Yeah. Then there's an element of that grind that's fun, but when you're just grinding by yourself, when you're just doing something that you don't want to do, there's a difference between between grinding and just and like working hard. You know, like grinding, I feel like is something that you may or may not want to do, and you're just kind of getting through it. But like working hard and having fun while like in like passionately working hard, passionately grinding. 
that's what I would say the void business is like to me because yeah, it's hard work. It ain't no sit at the fucking counter and, you know, fill people's bags with food at Burger King. It ain't that. Lift this log, Lift put it this over big here. Ass log, put it over here, put that shit in the trailer. We got this big ass tree to cut, but it's Swing that mall, but swing it's, that axe. It's, it's man shit, dude. And that's what I like about it. Like, it's not like I've I've worked some jobs, dude. Like, I mean, I was a valet for a country club. I mean, like, you know, I've I've done two internships with a uh, appraisal firm here in St. Louis. You know, I mean, I've 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 worked the desk jobs. I've done the preppy shit. And not that I don't like it. Not that I don't see myself, you know, potentially, you know, creating some sort of career that involves that. But to me, there's just got to be an element of getting outside and getting after it man and and being able to see the shit that you do like that's a, that's one thing that i hated about like doing these internships is like you know you go to work for nine hours and then you leave and everything looks the exact fucking same you know as it was before you got there and it's like well what kind of impact did i make today that's an interesting way to look about it right look at it i agree like what what did what the fuck did i do today? because the results are way less tangible they're not like yes, there in front of you you yes. just have to like reaffirm to yourself it's they're like, there okay they're there for sure but to me there's an element of that tangibility that i like you know i can see that like, that you can like you can see like i don't know just to start in the like start early in the morning getting up Driving to bum fuck nowhere in the middle of the woods, mm. starting up the saws, <laughs> taking these trees down, cutting them up, loading them up in the trailer, bringing them all back, and then like at the end of the day, as you're just like sipping on a cup of coffee, eating what eating, just I mean bashing like a fucking lumberjack. Cheers, by the way. Dayo. Dayo to the wood business. And just being able to see that big ass pile of wood in the back. Being like, damn, now that's what I did today. And then being able to split and, like, split it with all your buddies. But there's an element of the wood business that, like, I don't know, it's a little, it's kind of like the Wild West of work. Yeah, yeah. You know. The like, hustle, the grind, the grit. You're working for yourself. There's nobody telling you what to do. There's no boss telling you what you can and can't do. There's no, you know upcoming due dates for assignments for projects you know there's no reports to write it's just whatever you want to get done that day the only person that's going to enforce that is you and the people that you're with the the like-minded homies that are grinding this out with you and getting it done seeing to it working through those blood sweat and tears you know because we've we've all been there you know you're working on no food very low amounts of food in the woods hauling some logs that may or may not weigh 200 i think we i think we all worked pretty hard everybody that came out worked like damn jig dude i mean like you know we we were out there grinding you know and uh you know (laughs) you know driving out to the woods in the early morning you know crushing a road soda you know passing (laughs) passing a blunt back and forth getting out there and then getting it done there we go you know there's an element of that that i I didn't see in the office Mm -hmm. you know there's just something different about it like it's fun that entrepreneurial part like you said with no boss right but you have way more responsibility and you have every single setback and every problem you have to conquer yourself Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's what I've realized about this experience is I like that. I really do enjoy that. It's hard, though. It's a really different kind of, like, struggle. It is. It is. But it's it's something that I've experienced with, like, sports. Whenever you right. really pursue a hobby or a sport or an interest. Right. That there's a lot more shit to overcome. Totally. And if you were to do something like that, like an entrepreneurial endeavor for your career, then mm-hmm. it's not nearly – I don't know. It's – I guess it's sustainable if you can make it work, but it's not as consistent. There's no, no way it could be because there were a lot of major setbacks that like totally put us like ju- sing- if we had a truck, we mm-hmm. probably could have made four times as much money. Oh, way more, way more, way more. Transportation I mean, the, was really transportation like everything was our, was our by far our biggest issue. But I will give us credit, dude, for what we had. We did a lot and we overcame a lot yeah. because that's the thing about you know just it was just us man and Caleb Miller at the at the beginning of it god bless that man you know and other people involved you know like Joey Suntrup helping us out with the saw you know like i mean just 
people's knowledge and expertise and passion for doing what they do and just being and just passion for helping out the homies, man. Like mm-hmm. that's something that I will never forget. And that I will just, uh, and you know, and that I will take with me till the day that I die and, you know, and be forever in debt to these guys that helped us out because if, if it wasn't for them, wouldn't have been able to happen. So thank you, especially to those two guys and anybody else that was helping us through this whole thing, man. Beautiful job, executed perfectly, and I, we couldn't have done it without you. What are some of the problems we ran into? Just oh, spitballing. Spit the, the, the chainsaw, both of the chainsaws broke at one point. Right, right. Within like two days. Right, right. Small little bullshit parts, not being able to get them at, at certain stores. You know, then, then having, having to then go having to another to store. Around, then having to take down the part number, having to call all the stores around. Having to, you know, have that part shipped to this store. I need to pick it up at this time because I need to have the saw fixed by this time so I can get out to the woods by this time so I can have enough time to cut before it gets dark so I can have the wood back by this time to fill this delivery tonight. That's the shit that you have to, that you're constantly, mm-hmm. I mean, any, if any sort of problem, you know, like one delivery bails on us, you know, or whatever. Just like today. Or, or, or like what we were running into, you know, like solidifying places to cut. You know, that was one of my biggest that concerns. Was a, that was an early one. And then I feel like that got significantly easier. Exactly. Yeah. That got way that, easier as time went on. And one of the things that I definitely underestimated in going into this was the transportation piece. I didn't take two seconds to think about my car's capacity. My, you know, cause I and drive, we realized I drive, it a little too late because we only had a month exactly, to do all this. Exactly. Like little side note for anybody listening, there we only had one month to do all of Barely, this. Barely, even not even a month, man. We made that shit happen in less than like three weeks during the you holidays. Know, yeah, dur- during the holidays over, took a and week, over the pretty holidays. Much. Yeah, so we literally only had three weeks to make this all work. Mm-hmm. And you know, and so I feel like that the the transportation piece is one thing because when you know before when I was running diesel truck, you know I had two diesel trucks before. I had, you know, the Jeep that I do now. Uh, it's a Grand Cherokee with the V8. I mean, it's perfectly capable of towing up to 7,500 pounds, but you get a full trailer full of wood, and you're at 10,000 real quick. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, you have to be very mindful of that. You don't want to be tearing your car to pieces. And so, you know, when I had big diesel trucks, I mean, they could pull 10,000 pounds, and you wouldn't even be able to notice it. You know, it pulled 20,000 pounds. You wouldn't even be able to fucking notice it, you know. But, like, you know, you just, then you start running gas cars. And I didn't even think twice about that because I've been in such in the mind of, you know, working with trucks. that And I also results. So and, focused and, on the results. So fo- I was so result-oriented that I wasn't focusing on what the toll was actually taking on my equipment. And that's you that's know. a learning experience in itself. And it's a learning experience. And I'm so I, at the, at the end of it, yeah, you know, like I had to pay a little bit in, in like car repair. But at the end of the day, like I don't care because I mean I learned a shit. To, I had one of the best winters I've ever had. You know, just working out with my boys. I mean, every day was a passionate grind. Uh huh. You know, and that's something that I just love that we incorporated and and we and we ingrained it into our mindsets, right? Because every day it's all about. It's all about how you view something. You know, it's all about how you view the work that you do. You know, is is it just that grind? Is it just that boring, dull, grinding, monotonous bullshit? Or is it something that you can actually get passionate about? Because to 99.9% of the population, especially our generation, hauling logs out of the woods is not fun. But if you make it fun, there was something meaningful about There's it, which something is, very, that was something surprising to me. Almost primal. Yeah, almost, primal. Almost ex- yeah. instinctual, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, it's like, you look back four generations, you know, from us right now, I mean, like, how the fuck do you, you know? I mean, if you, if you, if you didn't live in a big city, or you didn't have access to natural gas, or you didn't have access to, you know, whatever you're using, uh, you know, electricity to heat your house, I mean, you were heating it by firewood. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot more common for a people to be common. splitting wood. and mm-hmm. Like, I never split wood in before right. this. Right. Never right. split a log in my life. Right. And it almost, like, takes you back to that. Now, obviously, we have much more, you know, advanced tech, you know, technology and equipment that helps us do that. I mean, like, big-ass chainsaws that make the work go a lot, lot, lot faster. Hydraulic like, log splitters. Hydraulic log splitters, you name it, log rollers, you know, trailers with brakes. I mean, all this shit to be able to move it, haul it, deliver it, yada, yada, yada. But, like... Just to be able to kind of access that that instinctual need to provide for yourself, for your family, like, and be able to do that in a in a through a means of hard manual labor and being able to witness 
forecast and deliver those results, you know, and see it all the way through. There's something about that that just embarks like in just embarks like a passion through me, you know, and, and, and through and that you came to observe, too. You know, like I saw you get really passionate about it, mm-hmm. As, you know, especially like towards the middle of it. You know, like I feel like when you like when we all first started, like, you know, we, you know, um, I was, the you know, I feel like I, I was the one that was kind of like, you know, guiding and like help, you know, kind of like instructing. That's how I totally forecast it to be, too. But I, what I was incredibly surprised with was how fast you guys were able to pick it up. Mm-hmm. Something that you guys have never done before, really, especially on any sort, you know, like any sort of, you know, commercialized scale. And then being able to totally adapt and like get into it, learn it real fast, and then be able to be productive with it and to be able to like, you know, to to think ahead. And you knew exactly what our plan was going to be. You knew exactly what our strategy was going to be. And then we find new ways, new innovative ways that weren't just through me. Like you guys were coming up with great ideas all the fucking time that I had never even thought about and just getting it done. That was a beautiful thing. I was super proud of you guys to be able to see that. You know, and so I don't know. I I felt very, you know, e- e- even though it wasn't as crazily profitable as we expect, as we anticipated it being, it was a growing process for us that is unparalleled and unmatched. Mm-hmm. You know, just I mean, unmatched. I would by agree. Any other. I have a lot more respect for business owners. Anybody mm-hmm. who started their own thing, uh, I respect totally. the process of it all too, because mm-hmm. I'm sure a firewood business is nothing compared to starting a restaurant totally no or starting whatever and there's just so much to learn as you go along and a lot of things that we just could have never anticipated but there are there are similarities in the methodical sense in how that gets done you know it's like in no matter what business you're starting whether it's lumber whether it's a restaurant whether it's a financial advising firm whether it's a marketing firm whatever it is you're always going to run into issues, mm-hmm. right? And when you're first starting, you know, there's no manager to go to to ask for help. You know, there's no human resources department to go f- to go to when you got your fucking feelings You pretty much hurt. got your friends. Yeah. You, you got, got friends. You, you got the homies that you're grinding with, that you're going to lean on, cry on, and grind with. And a lot of times right. you might be asking for a strict favor. Exactly. Or maybe maybe you can find an expert and somehow pick their mind. But mm-hmm. Right. Which is one thing that we definitely witnessed. I mean, one thing that I would say that I was super grateful for and that I noticed a lot, you know, in Vince. this business. Well, yeah, shout <laughs> out to my neighbor Vince for sure because that dude <laughs> lent us an entire trailer, a log dolly, all this equipment. For – Two, three hours of... Two, three hours of garage cleaning work. Because that was the first night. That was the first night of all this starting. You call me up. Hey, my my neighbor said he will let us use his trailer, which was our main setback. We had no way to transport it at all. We had no way of... No way of... We were going into firewood business with absolutely zero trailer. How fucking... We just threw ourselves into it. And then we found... You found it the night before. You're like, hey, just come over. We're going to help clean out this guy's garage in exchange for a trailer. I'm like... Grace All of right, God. All right, cool. Let's do it. Grace of God right there. And, like, I mean, so shout out to Vince, dude, for making that happen. I mean, but what were you saying before that? You were saying the thing you were the most fang- thankful for? Oh, the thing that I was most thankful for was just the people that we were able to meet. Like, we were mm-hmm. meeting new, incredible people on a daily basis. You know, people that had areas of expertise in fields that we've never even, like, thought of exploring. Mm-hmm. And just had new, like, creative ideas were like I mean just super I mean like I don't know about you but I feel like the vast majority of people that we either like dealt with as far as owning the property that we were cutting on or that we were clients that we were delivering to or they were people that we were going to get some piece of equipment from like the vast majority of those people were just so fucking cool I didn't get that everybody was so cool <laughs> everybody was everybody so, was so fucking cool. cool dude like you remember everybody. that on that on that last delivery of uh I think it was like we had four deliveries in one yeah. day, and yeah. the last guy was just super dope. I'm like, right. dude, people that burn wood are just generally, I remember you typically that cooler than the rest of the population. You're like, dude, you know one thing that I've definitely come to learn through this firewood business is that people that burn firewood are fucking cool. I was like, <laughs> yes, like that, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Maybe we just got lucky and went off on a limb. But I, everybody, everybody we met through the know, entire dude. process. I know. I'm gonna tell that one story because please do. All right, so we. 
we we end up um it's weird i'm like talking to you but i'm not talking to you because you've already heard the story like three times now. talk to them man but uh yeah talk to them talk, talk to them talk, yeah talk, yeah you guys <laughs> you it's you like guys that are, you guys are the reason we're doing this. that meme with the dog he's mm-hmm. like pointing mm-hmm. and, you know what i'm talking about uncle yep. sam yep. uncle sam yep. pointing yeah we want you <laughs> you for the military <laughs> um but no okay so we we end up selling like 120 dollars for a a face cord to this mm-hmm. one individual right we go we sell the wood. He ends up giving us road sodies, which there is a go. beer for the road, which is super cool. Is it fucking great? That's, yeah, that's the wood business. For you. <laughs> if you could describe, if you could describe like the people of the wood business, like in two words, it'd be road sodies. He knew what a road sodie was too. Exactly. Yeah, of course he did. He's fu- he's buying fucking firewood. <laughs> I never knew what that was. That is so funny. But he, uh, so he gives us a beer as we leave this transaction and a five dollar tip. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. And we end up losing the check, mm-hmm. and we're like, oh, shit, let's go over and see. Like, So I go over there alone like three days later or whatever it was, and I'm like, okay, let's see if I can get this check back. And I, I, I think we were both optimistic we could at least get some money back, but we were like right. offering to give him like a discount and whatnot. Right. Uh, so I go over there. I'm like, hey, I'm so sorry we lost the check. Mm-hmm. Um, is it fine if we were able to get – some of that money back we'll give mm-hmm. you a refund no big mm-hmm. deal because it's like ultimately it's better than no money right and he's like well it cost me 25 dollars to get a um f- for me to cancel that check so i'll right. just take that fee off gives me pretty much the full amount and then also offers me as i'm leaving offers me a road sody i re- i i mentioned that i had just finished college like three uh like two weeks ago and he's like Really, my son is actually uh, he he works at a logistics firm, mm-hmm. does really well. Here, right. I'll give you his number. He gives me his son's number and tells me to call him, saying that I know his dad. Isn't that crazy? And then he's like, "Yeah, I think you'd be a good fit for the job. I, I like your personality and your there marketing you major. I think you, I think you'd be a good fit." I'm like, "All right, cool, thank you." There you go. And then he also, um, oh, he yeah yeah, this is what the other thing was. He let he offered for us to potentially use his truck. How fucking crazy is that? Like, all four of those things with one customer. One customer that we were fucking boneheads and lost a check and had to go ask for money. Like, the one time that happened throughout the whole fucking wood yeah. business. And then we meet the coolest cat ever. You know? Like, that was fucking cool. That was cool. Like, we, we delivered firewood to that guy the first time. And, like, you know, we we or, you know we pulled up and... What was the thing that he asked? Because he was like, don't cross stack it in my stack. Like, at first I thought this guy was going to be, like, some, like, stingy, greedy bastard. Like, you know. I think he's somebody, like, I think he's a cool guy who got screwed over. Totally, totally. That's what we came well, to learn. But, no, I, I thought right. the same thing. Because at first I was like, ah, oh, this guy's going to be kind of hard, to, you know, hard to work with. Like, he's going to want every piece of firewood that we got in this trailer. Like, just squeeze us out of everything. But we, like, we filled his rack. We walked up. And he's like, hey, you guys like Bud Light? I was like. I, I love Bud Light. And he's like, you guys want something for the road? And I was like, I'll take a road, Zody, man. He's like, there you go. He's like, hey, thank you guys so much. You guys were amazing. He's like, you guys didn't cross deck. Like, you guys are the best firewood delivery guys we've ever had. And I was like, thank you so much, man. Like, totally came out of nowhere with that one. And yeah. when I went back, he kept asking. He's like, you guys are going to be here, right? We're going to need more wood. I'm like, eh, like he's going back to right. school. Right. Like, I don't know if we're going to be able to deliver, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Yeah, he was super cool. Dude, I mean, what what a le- – and just, like, the people that you meet, like, on the ro- – like, when you're on the road, when you're constantly – I mean, dude, like, we were going through a phase – I mean, we were meeting new people all the time. We were putting up ads, you know, constantly talking to just complete strangers and just being real with them. Just mm-hmm. being real with them. I'm not out here trying to sell some bullshit. It's like I'm just out here trying to be a, a just a cool firewood delivery guy. You know, that's just like, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, whatever you need, you know, call me. You know, I'll bring the wood. You know, and just and 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 people were super receptive to that, and they just they really appreciate that. And like, if you're respectful to their property, like, I mean, when we showed up, you know, like the our, one of our first customers, Mike Butler. I mean, when he bought wood, I mean, when we had to t- you know carry it through his backyard. What's the first thing we do? Without him even telling us, you know, well, of course you don't want to muddy up his backyard. You know, you're gonna put some sheets of plywood down because we'd always carry him the trailer and some tarps down so it doesn't muddy up his backyard as we're trudging through it, just stacking logs and. People are super, like, they're super, res- like, receptive and responsive to that, and they'll let you know that they appreciate all the shit that you, that you, like, if you go the extra mile of just being a decent human being and respecting other people's property and other people's shit, like, you would want somebody to respect yours. Yeah. They appreciate that. 
you know, and so I definitely saw some of that, you know, in the in the business as well, and I was super grateful. I think that was I think that was a you thing. I think that was something you were very strong at. Is I like I would have I could have seen myself doing something naively mm-hmm. and not thinking it through, like not mm-hmm. being inconsiderate whatsoever. Right, but just, but but like, just being ig- ignorant or naive, which is totally like exactly. Human which I mean, behavior. you could you could argue that's an excuse. You could argue it's not an excuse, but. Either way, I could have seen myself like just going into it, muddying up his yard a mm-hmm. little bit, not even really realizing that I caused that problem, right, right? Or realizing it's a problem, but not thinking of a solution. But it's the little thing. Yeah, you, I agree. That's that's a way of thinking to to be like meticulous to detail or anticipating problems right. with right. the customer and just right. exceeding expectations. It, honestly, it's it's like if you if you are to all the people listening to this that are thinking about starting their own business. It's the little things that matter. It's not your end all product that people care about as you know as as much as it would be. Like we could, like we could have delivered firewood to that guy, you know, muddied up his backyard, whatever. We still you know got the same amount of wood in there. But if we fucked his backyard, then what the fuck does he care about the firewood? Now he, he's got he a might, big ass yeah. mat. Now he he's might be hyper focused on exactly. that on that puddle in his backyard. Exactly. Now. I mean, like he had a nice backyard. You know, I don't want to you know, dig a trench in the back of his yard just because I'm delivering firewood, you know? So it's like, I mean, if he sees that, he's like, he doesn't give a fuck about the firewood no more. Now he's like pissed off that we fucked his lawn, you know? So it's like, it's like the little things like that, you know? It's almost it's like, like whenever you're selling a product or a service, you're kind of selling them on satisfaction. Totally. Like getting totally. the job done and then just the overall satisfaction and something to kind of get like get those little things are going to bump you up way more right. than you think they are because you're like, oh shit. I didn't. Right. I didn't even expect they would do this. They. Right. They. I just never even would have thought of that. That was right. very good on their part. Right. I mean, and like, especially I feel like people. I mean, not to like downgrade us, but I feel like as as college students, people maybe are anticipating to have lower expectations of us than they would of somebody who's been like doing this professionally for years. Yeah. Totally. Which is understandable. I mean, like you know, you see some you know college guys, you know, de- just delivering firewood. They don't have a sign on their car. They don't have a sign on the trailer. Like they're not a they're not a professional business. But like to see them go that extra mile and do everything that a professional firewood service would do, like they I don't know people people seem to really appreciate that. That's a big takeaway. That is mm-hmm. that's got to be like in my top five takeaways from this mm-hmm. experience. Totally. That setbacks are inevitable. Oh, inevitable. 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 No matter it, how hard Murphy's you Murphy's Law, man. I really do. I, like, it, it just seemed like everything that could, not everything, but most things that could have gone wrong mm-hmm. went wrong. Like things they I just never would have thought. They, like, if you think that you, have every, that, you, that you have something so well planned out that, you know, that you're not going to encounter any issues, then you have not thought about it very long. And you have not, clearly, you have not experienced much in life. Because, like, I mean, that... No matter how much, like there was so much shit that we would go through, like you know, just little parts on saw on like the saw break, you know, like like a little one, like one dollar, two dollar part on the saw breaks, and you can't use the fucking saw because it's dangerous, you know. It's mm-hmm. like if it doesn't have that little slide tensioner, you're or it, you know, it it doesn't have that little you know slide tension slip that goes over the you know the face of the of the tensioner. I mean, like your chain could come flying off the bar, and then you know, and then you get a chain stuck in your neck. You know, <laughs> you know, I mean, like it's shit like that that you just cannot foresee and you can't allow that, you know, to to discourage you. You just got to I mean, fuck, you know, something happens. Just go fix it. Get to have it. that. Th- that was another big part. Like it, it whenever those setbacks happen, your response mm-hmm. to them You're, is completely within your control. So you got to be able to anticipate and, and be realistic. The problems probably are going to happen. And when they happen, Definitely. when they inevitably happen, when they happen. Have the emotional intelligence to right. not have like a whole uh, super discouraged and frustrated response totally. to that. I totally. just be like, okay, it's fine. Remain calm in that moment. Focus on the solution. Don't focus on the problem. Don't get worked up about it. Focus on the end goal. Because nothing will bankrupt your business like a bad mindset. Yeah, and that that is frustration, and it is. It's it's letting those setbacks. It's letting those obstacles get the best of you like when you you know when we would face a problem i mean we, we just call it quits be like yeah we're done can't do it no more no no something breaks in the saw 
all right, Jordan, you you know you stay here, you know stack these logs, yada yada, you know you know go mark me some more to cut. I'm going straight to the parts store, getting it, mm-hmm. and putting it on, and coming right back. And I didn't even know how to fix a lot of things on the on these saws before this, but I, but I had I you know I I looked at this, you know I was looking at like the labor rates of these places that were you know these small mechanic shops that were working on chainsaws, you know I was like, well I could go take it to get it fixed for two hundred bucks. Or I could just watch some, you know, watch 14 minutes worth of YouTube videos and do it my damn self, mm-hmm. you know. And it's and it's like it's thinking in mindsets like that, you know, thinking in ways like that that allow you to save on those little things and just save cost, you know, save cost wherever you can by doing shit yourself. If you're a small business, like if you're a small business, there's no there's not very many just like big helping hands to come help just bring you to the top. Like it's on you. And I and and you know that's why not everybody's cut out to you know to run their own operation, you know because like you know a lot a lot of people are gonna experience those setbacks and they're gonna let them get the best of them, mm-hmm. you know and they're and they're just gonna look at it like it's something that they can't overcome, you know, because I feel like if you let an obstacle get the best of you, it wasn't really an obstacle. It was just when you decided to quit. I always like thinking about it as if the universe is testing you in that moment. Right. And this is easier said than done, but like just to think that it's almost, if you want to say God, universe, reality, whatever, is putting a test on you to see if you have the character, the integrity, the emotional intelligence to be able to carry forward, the perseverance, Mm -hmm. the resilience. Right, the resilience. That tr- that element of true grit that we would always talk about, mm-hmm. you know, because I mean, how many days did we leave the job just tired AF, you know, a lot, but it's that element of true grit, you know, getting through it, getting it done, and then being able to like, just, I don't know, gr- just gratuitously thank yourself for that at the end that you did make it all the way through and being able to look at that and just the, the element of satisfaction that comes with that. Like I... And everyone's seen that that's played sports, you know, or that's played sports at a competitive level, you know, has, 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 you know, almost bore witness to that element of true grit. You know, it's the, yeah, we, you know, in, in soccer, we, you know, we might be down by six goals, but I'm going to finish this game. Like it's the last game of soccer I'm ever going to play, you know, or like I have the chance to win it. And I am gonna win it. Cause whenever I've been on both sides of a six zero loss, six zero right. loss to six zero win. Right. And whenever one of my main goals, especially as a defender, right. I mean, just this is just like any game, honestly. Especially right. if I'm going against up against somebody who's really good. Right. But is to get in their head to the point that they think they can't get past me. There you go. Like that was my mentality whenever I was a defender to win that mental battle because you can tell when they're kind of letting up look at my or Tyson. when they've already accepted that mental defeat right that's that's where you went right there is in the mind look at a guy like mike tyson when he was in his prime right mike tyson mike Ty- mike tyson <laughs> my my mouth is getting dry from this damn coffee he has the best voice in all of maybe human history mike i was tyson. gonna say history of sports but <laughs> no, dude, <I> <laughs> mad respect to mike tyson dude that dude is fucking crazy man but um no dude like you look back at his in his prime years i mean when as soon as he would step into the ring as soon as his opponent would step into the ring his eyes never left his opponent is that right Mm -hmm. never not once even during you know in in between rounds he wouldn't look at his coach he'd be looking right at that guy right at his face the whole time the whole time leading up to the fight walking to the ring yada 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 getting in the ring you know shaking hands every second of that fight what Mike do you think Tyson, that is you think that's intimidation or do you think he is that focused it's intimidation focus determination and the will to win mhm and just just that just that he's putting himself in that mindset is this is my this is my only focus right now is kicking this guy's ass you know taking the title of this fight taking the win and getting out you know that's a fantastic point because i don't know if you were to i don't know throw some punches maybe you got hit yourself a few times right and then you like look down 
you're looking down at the ground whenever mm-hmm. you're I don't know the guys coming over and wiping wiping all the sweat off your face the blood off your face mm-hmm. and you look down your focus could shift to like exactly damn I got hit I got right. rocked I right. got rocked that round right and, and you know in my tight I mean he wouldn't be looking at the crowd he wouldn't be getting the crowd going crazy he'd just be looking at his opponent just trying to find any sort of weakness in him just trying to instill the fear that you are fighting Mike Tyson. And this is even before Mike Tyson had a big name in boxing. He would still do this. It's because he had that mindset of, you are going to remember my name, whether I win or lose this fight. Mm. You are going to remember fighting me for the rest of your life. You know, because I was the guy that, you know, whether I won or lost, scared you to shit. You know, and that was what, and that was why he was, I mean, just one of the reasons why he was so fucking successful in the world of boxing is because he was so, it came off just so intimidating, but it literally was, I mean, there was definitely an element of intimidation that was going through his mind, but it was literally just that focus, just that focus and that determination to win, you know, that got him. And that, and that's one thing that I feel like we definitely applied to this business was just that focus and that determination to whether we won or lost, we were going to go in there, you know, we were going to go through that day, we were going to do whatever we had to do, we were going to stick it out, we were going to get that shit done, no matter what the cost, no matter what the toll it was on us, because at the end of the day, that's how you sleep at night, you know, I don't know how motherfuckers that go to work and just half-ass it all day go to sleep at night, I can't do that shit, you know, I mean, if I don't, if I don't, you know, spend a day knowing that I gave that you know that I gave my all or that I gave everything that I had to make that 20 that 12 hours that I was up that 16 hours that I was up at least somewhat productive got something figured out you know did something accomplished something helped somebody yada 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 if I just sat on my ass all day I I would not be able to go to sleep at night because I wouldn't be able to live with myself you know, and that's the mindset that we took in this business, and that's why we we turned it into what it was. I'm and definitely was- wired the same way, and as as I was telling, I was telling you this earlier today, but I'm at this this transitional point in my life right. to where it's really bizarre. Like, you graduate, and the first like two weeks, so this is this is my experience at least. You graduate, and the first two weeks, you're like, yeah. And you're like mm-hmm. excited, but then then you kind of start feeling this pressure of like, what are you doing after? What's your plan? What's your plan? And like, right. as you know, like I'm going to Europe, but I don't have a job lined up for after that. And right. I've been I've been getting kind of uh, I don't get anxiety very much, but mm-hmm. I was getting stressed and like some anxiety about mm-hmm. that. And and I think a lot of it comes from the place of. And this is the reason I bring this up. It comes from the place of being fearful that. I am going to be doing unfulfilling work or a job mm-hmm. that I'm not going to enjoy mm-hmm. or a job that I'm not even going to want to go to much less like put in 150%. Right. I, right. I want that job that I really enjoy getting up for. I feel like I'm getting something out of. I feel like I'm learning a lot. I feel like I'm really contributing and it gives me some sense of fulfillment. You, some sense of meaning. Yeah, you want 100%. That job to be meaningful. Satisfying, meaningful, right. fulfilling. Right. Fulfilling. Fulfilling of this desire to like be – of some service, of some just general help to society, you know? I don't want to trade my time for money. I don't want it to be strictly right. that because that, I just think, I, that just sounds like a miserable existence, honestly. Totally. Not I to be so dramatic, but it I sounds... I know a lot of people that just work for the money and they're miserable. They don't like it, you know? I, I, I don't think they go home feeling fulfilled. But then I know some scares people, the shit out of me, man. But then I know some people that don't, you know, that do what they love, might only make 30, 40 grand a year, whatever, but they're happy. They're happy as hell, you know, because they do what they love and they feel like they provide a purpose. Now, obviously, you know, if you're 50, 60 years old, only making 30, 40 grand a year, I mean, it's going to be hard to, you know, kind of like, you know, sustain that into retirement, but that's a whole other discussion. But it's like, if you're doing what you love, the money doesn't really matter because you can't, and I know this sounds so cliche, You money will not buy you happiness. It will buy you things that make you happy for a temporary period of time, right? But then, you know, let's say you have a great job. 
you know, paying you $250,000 a year, you know, and you buy yourself a boat and that's fun to go, you know, do on the weekends. But if every day, Monday through Friday, you dread those five days of going to work and slaving away and coming home to a wife that yells at you, kids that disobey, like shit like that. If you're not happy in life, if you're not doing something, taking part in something and fulfilling something that makes, that satisfies you and that satisfies your desire to fulfill a general need of this world, of somebody else's, that's, that's the other thing. If you're just fulfilling your own wants and desires, you will never be content. But if you're helping other people fulfill theirs in content, you know, in congruence with yours, that's what really solidifies happiness. You know, if you're fulfilling other people's wishes and other people's needs along with your own at the same time, simultaneously, that's what's bringing you the most, the highest level of satisfaction, in my opinion. You know, you're doing something that you love that is providing a need or a service that people really appreciate. And I feel like that's something that we were doing this winter. I definitely feel like people appreciated us. People definitely appreciate us. I think we went us. above and beyond expectations. Because, dude, like, after, like, sometimes after these deliveries, like, we didn't just show up, deliver firewood, and leave. We'd have conversations with them. We'd have great conversations with all of them. You know? I think they appreciated our story as well. Yeah. Oh, you're not just returning from college and just working some. You're not just working at Target? No, you guys are just. We're trying to make the best of the fucking four weeks that we have off school. You're just start. You're starting a wood business? It's like, what? Right. Interesting. Okay. Because, I mean, it's like people are like, wow, that's kind of interesting. You know? Like that one teacher, I think she was really intrigued with you as an individual. Mm -hmm. And then. I think uh, that other that get the guy who taught at Lafayette, he taught like mm-hmm. special ed. I thought yeah. he was intrigued with us as like a group. Totally. He was intrigued mm-hmm. with like my trip to Europe and like right. how I was funding it with this and right. And um, I don't know. I think people, I think people appreciated our story and were a little bit fascinated. Totally, man. I mean, it was a, it was not to toot our own horn, not to toot our own horn at all. But I, I think people appreciated it. I think they appreciated everything: the, the mm-hmm. product, the service, the deliveries. Mm-hmm. Everything about it. Because you're providing. The effort. The effort. I think the effort and the effort at our age with like the minimal experience we have. Right. And here's the thing that I would say to anybody that wants to start a business where you're you're trying to fulfill a need. You're trying to provide people with something that they want. You're trying to provide either a product or a service. You will not be successful if you just try and provide that product or service. You have to provide an experience that people are going to either be extremely satisfied with or dissatisfied with. You know, there's no such thing as just eh. So how do you how do you provide an experience selling uh, toilet paper? Toilet pa- are are you talking I about? Can, I, I I could probably answer my own question, but I'm I, <laughs> let's have some fun with this. All right, how do you yeah how do you provide an experience whenever you're selling toilet paper? Are you talking about selling it like? In in person, or are you talking about selling it like on a big on a large scale? Let's we'll say a like, large scale, like like, like large you're, scale. Like you're Charmin, yeah, right. But you're selling it's the, the brand that came to my head as well. Well, okay, that's a whole other. That's if you if if you're not doing it personally, like face to face, you know, like you know you uh, just you just mano o mano, you know mano v mano. You're just with you know somebody. If if you're if you're a big firm trying to connect with a b- vast broad audience. Then your only way of doing that is through marketing, you know, is through the right mass marketing is through the right, you know, is getting people to associate your product with a certain type of experience. Right. When I buy Charmin Ultra Strong, you know, I wipe my ass with it. You know, I don't expect it to break like I just wipe my ass with some fucking library toilet paper. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's funny. You know, it's like, you know, so you're providing, you know, it's like, I mean, you're providing the element of satisfaction. Yeah. You know? I mean, no one's satisfied when they're wiping their ass with some shat toilet paper and it breaks and your fucking fingers stink. Oh, I've seen some, yeah, I've you know, seen some on. tweets about that. <laughs> I've seen some tweets about that experience. No one's fucking satisfied. You know, where they got to fucking dump the whole roll just to get enough so it doesn't <laughs> yeah. fucking, yeah. And then buy, yeah you, you, got got that, you got the hand motions on. It looks yeah, like you're hitting you the uh, yeah, little yeah, speed bag. You know, rash all over your ass from some sandpaper. No, dude, <laughs> no one likes that shit. 
you know, and, and are you, and I mean, unless you're just some cheap, miserable fuck, I mean, are you going to go back and buy that stuff yourself? No, you're going to buy something that you, that actually provides you some sense of satisfaction, just fulfills <laughs> some general purpose. Reminds me of the stepbrothers whenever Will Ferrell wipes his ass with the carpet. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, so I don't know, man. I mean, in everything that you do, if if you can provide, I mean, and I said that wrong. I mean, I should rephrase that. I mean, it's not that you won't be successful, but it's like you you have a much higher chance of being successful. If people, if you stand out, you know, we talk about in school competitive advantage all the time. What's your competitive advantage in this market? Like what sets you apart? You have to find that. You have to find what you're good at. You have to find which, what you enjoy, you know, and you have to run with that. And, yeah, you, you're you going to, have you know, run into some obstacles. You're going to run into things that set you back a little bit, you know. But how are you going to overcome those? And how are you going to get past that? How are you going to market those competitive how are you gonna, advantages? And, and how are you going to use the things that you personally are really good at to that business you know how how are you going to provide your your clientele your s- suppliers your vendors your distributors your everybody that's involved in your business bank whatever how, how are you going to create a lasting impact on those people and how are you going to provide them with something that they're gen like they are thoroughly satisfied with mm-hmm. and that they will remember you by you know, like setting aside, like delivering firewood, set, you know, s- setting aside the time to make sure that every piece is cut, you know, satisfaction, the right length, that it's not shit. Wood. Perceptual satisfaction that and, and, and taking the, the 15 to 20 minutes after we make the delivery just to talk to those people and gather a little bit of info. Just just, hey, man, like, you know, it's a beautiful place you got here. Like, you know, I, I, I love your back. I love what you guys did with the backyard. I mean, like, and I love that, by the way, because I may have told you this. People but love talking about my, your stuff. My number one problem with serving tables is that I talk too much, is that I wanted to connect with people too much. And I was like, damn, I feel like most jobs, that's actually going to be a really positive thing. And, like, I feel like it's one of my best qualities, but at this particular job, it's not a good thing. Like you, you don't want to have a ton of conver- not right. most people don't want to have a conversation whenever you're serving. I right. personally don't. Right. I usually don't care. Well, because you're it's unless not- I, if I was alone, I would talk to him. Right. Maybe with one other person, but most of the time, I'm not an unfriendly person. I just like right. Bring me my food, and I'll talk to my friend, and then that's right. it. Right. Because you know, like you never like in in the restaurant business in this in the serving business. I mean, you don't know if they're on a time crunch. You don't know if you spend fi- if you spend fifteen minutes talking to one table about you know life in general or whatever. You know, you're I mean, neglecting all the you're other neglecting tables. Neglecting your eight other tables that need. It took you know, me a while to realize right, all of this. Right, and then they're getting pissed <laughs> off at you. Yes, you know, and so like in in that business, people almost just appreciate that worker bee that just you know go 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 go. You know, is you know is but. If, if that's not in your personality, you know, like it, I mean, in my, I mean, I, I can do that, but I don't, you know, I don't enjoy just, you know, going, you know, table to table. I mean, I've, I've never worked a serving job and I don't really, really ever want to, cause it's not something that I see myself shining at because I do like to have that like interpersonal connection with people. And I, and I, and I like to, sh- you know, show them that I appreciate who they are and I appreciate what they do and what they've done with their time here on this earth. You know, that's not the right job for me. No, I'd I'm agree. not I'm I'd not agree. I'm not bashing servers at all. Like I have mad respect just for not what for you. you. Yeah. It's just not for me. And that's why I'm I really don't want to go back for it. I mean, this is the right. last time I'm gonna be working any job like right. that. Right. Is now. Right. But I really don't want to go back to serving. And right. I, I'm actually don't I've been limit thinking about yourself it. to that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. What would I it's it's uh, so, some people are the fa- money like, right now fantastic at it. The money right now is better. Right. But it just it, it, whenever you do it the way you're supposed to do it, at least with me, mm-hmm. I I hated it. Right. I hated it when I only took right. orders. Just listen to people. Go go get their drinks. Come back, and don't strike up conversations. That's when I got bored. Because you feel like a minion. Yeah. You know. Yeah. At, I feel like at, a servant. At least I feel like I a servant. Would. At least I would. And, and I feel like a lesser too, kind of. But you feel like there's a, there's a difference though between like being a servant. And being just like a, a mindless minion, you know, a servant is actually going to witness some, uh, you know, a, quite a bit of 
perceived appreciation for what they're doing. Right. But I feel like a lot of times, cause I have a, I have, I've had a lot of friends that have worked serving jobs and, you know, and they tell me all these just, in my opinion, horror stories. And they're talking about it. Like, it's just the everyday thing of the job, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, just hustling your ass off and trying to be like the best version of you that you can be. And then people just shitting on that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I'd say that's super accurate. I mean, I'd be like, fuck you, dude. Like, fuck off. You know, like, I mean, there was, there was a table one time and like, I wasn't super comfortable taking six, six people at a time right. or whatever what it is. And I don't know, to, to some servers, that's really easy, but I just wasn't like there yet. Right. And this, this table had like a $120 bill and they didn't tip me and they went out of their way to tell their manager. They thought I was like, they literally said I was like retarded or stupid or something like that. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I like, I messed up like the smallest thing. Yeah. I forgot. Oh, she asked what was in this alcoholic drink, and I didn't know the answer. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm not to be to be honest. I'm not sure, but I can ask somebody else. Yeah, and they like went out of their way. Like people, yeah, just so disrespectful and rude. I know. I, know. I was like, what? Like that bothered me because I like I genuinely, I just hate jobs like that. I hate jobs where you're you're trying so hard to appease somebody, but you're not going to because you have such a high volume of people. You're not going to please everybody. And it's it's frustrating, especially whenever you're giving it like a full effort. It's it's like really frustrating. Right, right. And people are so quick to judge too. I'm like the the quickest it's thing. People like that that I just want to pass out a brochure to hell. Yeah. To <laughs> be like, hey, you know, I just think you guys should really, you know, it, you it might be in your best opinion, you know, best mindset to take a look at this because I think you guys are going to need to reserve a room. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come around with what? What did the Catholic Church sell in like the 1500s? No, the condolences. Indulgen no indulgences. Indulgences. So that's yeah. like your your pass to get out of hell. Well, Is that it's it's it goes beyond. It's much more complicated, but essentially, it was you were able to buy sins you know you're able to buy away either your sins or a, the sins of a deceased loved one or a family member see you come around you give out these these free passes to hell and you right. tell them to go fuck themselves you, exactly. you hand it right over and i come Those around the people on their walk out of the restaurant and, and i'm like hey you want to buy an indulgence i feel like you're down in your luck is that right there nice to me jordan fisher nice to me there you go <laughs> how about that for a scheme yeah there we go oh, no man. and then we split profits 50 50 obviously i like cause... it i like it i like it you know i'll just be the i'll just be the <laughs> hell and damnation guy. <laughs> and, I'm, and i'm it's the good cop bad and cop and then you're the savior <laughs> <laughs> there we go oh man. devil and jesus on your shoulder there you go yeah for real <laughs> yeah you got so you got the devil and you know the angel we we probably but, gotta wrap this up though honestly oh, shit. well what do you want to talk what, what do you want, how much time we got left Honestly, we probably gotta get going now. Just no, get, no. let me let me check my text for my friends. I don't know. If my friends are making fun of me right now. Uh, yeah, I told I told them I'd leave at eight thirty at the latest, and I gotta pack all this up too. What time is it? Eight thirty. You can just yeah. leave this here, and you can get it tomorrow. Don't worry about it. It's cool with me. It's cool um, with me. Uh, I am supposed to go. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap this up and then I'll tell you after. Sounds good, man. Cool. Do you All have right. any last thoughts? Well, I guess we, well, we got to end it on something. Okay. 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 You know what I think? I don't know. Let's end it on three things that you learned from this winter break. Okay. You want to start? I will. Three things that I've learned over the winter break. Everybody has their strong suits. Everybody has something that they're good at and it's okay for those to be different totally and it's something that you need to grow appreciative towards because everybody has some things that they're extremely good at and things that they're not so good at but you have to learn if you're going to work together in a group you have to learn how to utilize those because it, it can be an amazing thing like you are way better at like marketing online than I am and I recognize that and like you have access to so many more people online and like being able to like sell products and like being able to post, you know, like post things, get things up way better than I am. You know, like I get scared by electronics sometimes, you know, <laughs> I'd rather be out in the woods than being on my, you know, like figuring out how to post some shit to fucking Facebook. I don't even have a Facebook, you know, so it's like people like, like you, there's a strong demand for that. You know, me, I'm decent at cutting down trees. You know, so there, but, and there's a demand for that, but I'm shitty at fucking posting shit online, you know, cause I don't ever do it. 
but it's okay though. Like th- like those things, you have to learn how to grow and appreciate those things. Number two, always, if you're passionate about it, the 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 word the two words the two P's that you have to remember that always will coincide. If you're passionate about something, you have to be preservant to that. Persevere through it. You know, if you're passionate about starting a business, if you're passionate about doing something that you love, do it. Do it and persevere and don't let any obstacle, anything get in your way of that. Because the the gratitude, just the just I don't know, your general feeling about it at the end is going to be is going to make it all worth it. Just seeing what you've been able to accomplish. And you loved every minute of it. Yeah, there was times that you hated it. You know, that, that, that you hated going through all these and trying to figure out solutions to all these obstacles. But you did it anyway. And you did something that you loved. And you made that successful. And you learned so much from it. Persevere through things that you're passionate about. Number three. Hmm. I would say... Be grateful. Be fucking grateful. You know, because yeah, this business, did we make the 30 grand that we thought we were going to make? No. Not even close. But at the end of the day, who gives a fuck, man? I had a great Dude, time. How much do you think we did in revenue? Oh, I have no idea. I, don't, I, I don't, think we're. I don't, I don't even want to think about it. But at the end of the day, it's like, do, like, be grateful for the experience. Be grateful for the time that you spent with people that you love and care about and be grateful for the work that you do, you know, be grateful for your time here on this earth because it's limited and it's taken and make the best of every day that you're here, man. Like that's huge. That's huge. I like it. Whether you made money or not, if you made the best of that day, then you were successful. You know, at the end of the day, that's all, that's all it's about. Be fucking grateful and learn to appreciate the little things. It's, it's, it's the little things that make a big difference. I like it. Uh, now you go. Three mm. things you learned. I would say we touched on this earlier, but number one, setbacks are inevitable. Totally. And there are going to be a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. And kind of tying that in with what you said with perseverance and resilience right. and just, just grinding through that. And mm-hmm. getting through it and not getting too overworked about it. Um, I have a lot of it, too. I got a lot of respect for individual business owners, especially anybody who's started anything by themselves. Totally. Somebody who's a raw entrepreneur. I, I have a lot of respect for that. Just finding that need and figuring out everything along the way to like fill, fulfill that need. That's mm-hmm. That's crazy. To start a business... It takes a different breed of people, and totally. I, I have a lot of respect for that kind of grind. Totally. And then third, yeah, I'd say how to, I don't know, go, go at least with me, like my mentality, we had different perspectives on this, but my mentality mm-hmm. was sit back and kind of be a sponge and just be really open-minded and mm-hmm. try to learn as much as you possibly can because mm-hmm. we before we even started doing any of this, you and I had talked on the phone for hours, and mm-hmm. – we, we talked about this experience, and I realized very quickly on, like, there's a ton I didn't know, mm-hmm. but I also knew I could contribute in my own ways, too, mm-hmm. and I knew I could pick it up quick. Totally. So I was like... And you did. And thank you. Thank you. I, I, I figured just go in there, like, with an open mind, and at bare minimum, I'll learn a ton about random shit. Like, I didn't right. know what a... I didn't know what a wood burl was right. until this. I, How about it? I didn't know. I didn't even know what a mall was. I didn't know what a mall was. I never swung a mall mm-hmm. down on a piece of wood and realized how and satisfying out, it is. One of the, like it's one of the most satisfying things ever. Yeah, I agree. And you you t- you talked it up in that way so much, and I was like, really? What, mm-hmm. what is this guy talking about? No mm-hmm. way. And now I see what you're saying. My old roommate, like he reinforced what you said. He's like, oh, it's fun, man. Just mm-hmm. swinging it down. It's it is. fun splitting it's fun. wood. It is. And it is. It's a great workout too. Um. I don't know. I would say just keep an open mind because I I think throwing myself into something like this, who knows? Like I might be working something five years down the road and then something I learned in this winter might be able to be applied in Mm -hmm. in that aspect. Right. 
what, whatever, whatever it may be. I have no idea. Whatever it may be. And you won't know that until it happens. Exactly. But you develop the skill sets, the mindset, and the appreciation to be able to do it. Because that's kind of my mentality at this age is, I, yes, I want to specialize, but I also I want to get a lot more well-rounded. Right. I want to get a lot more well-rounded. I want to become a lot uh, – there's so many things. There's so many things I want to be more knowledgeable about. History. I want to, like, travel a little bit so I have an idea of, like, what other places in the world – like, just more culturally competent is kind of what I'm getting at. Right. Uh, more – I don't know. You're one. Of, that's what I like hanging out with you in general. Is like I have an open mind whenever I hang out with you, and you're one of those people. Like we both know things that the mm-hmm. other one doesn't. Right. And so we're. I feel like there's a lot of information that I've learned from like you as an individual mm-hmm. that I don't. That I realized it's like a like I think I I think you have a ton of practical knowledge, mm-hmm. which is something I'm lacking in, and it like that like working with you this winter. So I, this would maybe be part of my third thing mm-hmm. would be. All right, I realized there's a lot of practical knowledge that has a ton of utility in the right, world right. that I, I just don't know anything about mm-hmm. or didn't know anything about, like working right. ratchet straps right, or, right. you know, something like something totally. very practical like mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, just going in with an open mind and, and just learning as much as possible and mm-hmm. becoming more open minded right. or, or becoming more well rounded. Right. Oh, totally. And I think those are great. Those are great three things to end on, you know. And I think like an overall theme that we can kind of wrap all of this into as we end here is if we give like one piece of advice to like anybody trying to do their own thing, kind of like go out of their way to like, you know, provide something that they feel like the world needs. Biggest piece of advice is that be meaningful in all that you do. Be, be meaningful, man. Like, if you're just going through the motions, dude, it ain't ever going to get done the way that you want it to, you know, the, it, and it's not ever going to have the impact that you want it to, to have. But if you're meaningful with all that you do, not even, not just delivering the firewood, but talking to the people afterwards and just letting them know that, I mean, dude, love your place, love your backyard. Like, you guys are super nice people. Thank you guys for letting us, you know, come and deliver firewood. If you guys ever need anything, like, please just let us know. You know, like we'll be like we'll be right here. We'll be in town until this long. But like in that meantime, like if you guys need anything at all, please give us a call. You know, like be meaningful, man. Like you have, and then follow through. It doesn't mean shit if you don't do it. You know, but it's like be meaningful. Like give that customer like that extra that extra step that they weren't expecting, that they that they totally weren't expecting to come from you. And then like you drive off and like they're sitting in their living room being like, damn. You know, like I'm call, like he's my he's gonna be my firewood guy from now on. Mm-hmm. I fucking love like I, I I want him to come back to my door. That customer loyalty. Exactly. Exactly. Like your customers need to appreciate what you do. You need to find a way to make that viable. And if you can do that, then you'll be successful no matter what you do. I'd say that's fantastic advice. And I think that's something you you don't only talk it, you bet like I think you that was something I really picked up on early on in this is that you didn't want to, even like whenever we had some shit product here, you're mm-hmm. like, yeah, just burn it. And we started a fire right there. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, cool. And uh, yeah, just not giving people dog shit wood and <laughs> not giving them dog shit product and making right. sure, even though it is a one-time deal, mm-hmm. you know, just like providing them right. a good experience. Just a good experience. Because at the end of the day, like, you know, when you're talking to God and he's rerunning your life for you, and, you know, and all those times that you screwed people over come up on the screen. How are you going to explain yourself? Yeah. You know. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Just be meaningful, man. Be genuine. Be honest. Be a good person. And good things are going to come your way. But. We did well. We did well. We did well. I, I, I mean, as far as money goes, I think we did all right. I don't think we did bad. I don't think we did great. Considering the amount of setbacks, man, I think we I think we did all right. And we, and we learned... You also have to recognize that knowledge has value, man. We come back and do this next year with big diesel trucks, trailers, with all the ex- all the knowledge and experience that we have. Even if it's only a weekend thing for you, it's a full time thing for me. There you go. I mean, do we? We like we've already overcome ninety percent of the obstacles. Our only one left is transportation. If That's another that, thing. Another big takeaway is that with go- going off of the setbacks, right? Anything you start, it's it's gonna take. A 
It's we didn't. We didn't have nearly. We had time. three weeks, dude. If we had three months, then we would astronomically profitable. Yeah, I think about a month and a half is when we really would have started gaining traction. Oh, I think. God. I think that. Just look at that last week, man. That yeah. last week that we had when we finally worked out all the kinks. We got every. We got a process down. We knew what we were going to do before we even showed up. Just that that patience. The patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to be patient, patient with this shit. Perseverance. I know I've used that word a lot in here, but like, you know, and just an end all goal to ascertain that pursuit of happiness. That's what we're fighting for, man. There we I'm go. telling you, you know, you look at life through that mindset, dude, you're going to be a fuck. You're going to be a happy motherfucker. I'll tell you that right now. All right, I got to get going. All right, buddy. Sounds good. What? But, uh, yeah, good, good ending note. And, uh, I like it. Overall, I think we could both agree, great life experience. Great fucking life experience, bro. I can't wait to go into business with you at some point in the future. You know, Whether it be firewood or anything. Fire, I, I fire, seriously firewood, think we financial well together, services, so. tax services, you name it, dude. Well, I'm down to go into business about anything, bro. But like, just to get the opportunity to lead, man. You know, just, just to get the opportunity to lead people to where they want to go in life, man. Like, that's what I'm all about. I like it. You know, because I want to get there, too. And I want to bring my fuck. I want to bring my cronies with me. Hey. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah, I want to see us all at the top. Not just me. Fuck that, dude. I wouldn't want to be at the top if it was just me. I want to see all my boys at the top. Enjoying that shit together. <clears throat> and I'm optimistic about my future, your future, and a lot of the other people we surround ourselves with. I think we got a good bunch of people. Totally. That's something I'm grateful for at this point in life. Totally. My, always, my mindset was if I, if I got rich and in the process somebody else got really poor, I never got rich. I did. I never did. I'm just lying, cheating, stealing, motherfucker. Altruism, bro. That's what makes this world a better place. If you don't have an ounce of that, then you can go to hell. Fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second time you told somebody to go to hell. There you go. I tell a lot of people to go to hell. A there, there's a lot of people in this world that need to go to hell. <laughs> it, it, that should be our ending now, right? There, there you go. Yeah, there it is. Wait. Thank you guys for listening and tune back in some other time. Hell yeah.